Hello world, welcome to another episode of The Bird and the Bead. I'm your host, Colin Mel. I'm, on, I'm here with my two co-hosts. Guys, do what you do. Yo, it's K after Death French. How y'all doing? Hey, it's your girl, Harley. So we're back with another episode of The Bird and the Bead. You know what we do here. We come here and talk about your love life, your sex life, your relationships, you know. And of course... As always, this episode is brought to you by KinkyCandyOnline.com. Reminding you guys to keep Keep it it kinky. Yeah. So, guys, how are you guys feeling this week? Oh, I am, like, extremely happy. happy. Like, for the first time in a very long time, I feel like, you know what? I just might have a pretty good birthday. Okay, okay. I just might. Everything looking sweet right now. Everything is looking mm-hmm. like it's falling exactly where I needed to fall. Yeah, I've been through a horror story, but then it's it's looking up now, so that's about it. Well, I told you guys my Target story earlier, but I guess I'll share it with the audience. So, uh, if you guys know, if you guys have been following me on my website, Carmel.com, you know, recently I went and saw the Pikachu movie, and I got really excited for Pokemon all over again. I pretty much got sucked back into the fandom after not being around for 20 years. You know, when I left, it was only 150 Pokemon. Now there's yeah, like, right? now there's 800 of these dudes like, whoa, 800, hold on wait, now. Wait, hold on wait. now. Hold on. I know it's been 20 years, whoa. but Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. Yo, they just been reproducing. <laughs> right? Like, hold on. They're like, no, we, we need to keep making money. We know you, you left. All right, they we just, had, we had to figure something out. Elements <laughs> and they they put two and two together and got four. But to make a long story short, I really wanted to get a Charizard card. I couldn't find a Charizard card, and I was you know I was contemplating buying this box set that guaranteed I was gonna get a Charizard card, but it was like twenty bucks, and it came with like a whole bunch of other cards in there, like a couple of other booster sets or whatever. And, and when you know what I realized, look when I was looking, looking at it, I'm like, yo, this is basically gambling for children. Mm-hmm. When we was kids, you didn't know what card you was going to get. You hoped mm-hmm. you, that you got a Pikachu or something. You know, you open it, you get a Meowth. <laughs> you get a, no, like no, a Grimer. No, no, the worst. <laughs> Magic card. Oh, my God. Why? <laughs> so, the most, one of the was, most useless Pokemon. Gambling. Boy. This thing was gambling. And I'm sitting here like, I can't believe they got me again. You know, but at least, like, I'm now having to pay 20 bucks for a guarantee to get a Charizard. I'm just like... If you want it, $20. Right? It's just 20 You gotta go for it. How bad you want it, girl. Right? Oh, and I'm just sitting here like... And it also comes with other Detective Pikachu packs. And I'm just like... I already got enough Detective Pikachu packs just to prepare for the, the Pikachu Pokemon short that we were planning. So I'm like, I don't need that many more cards. I just want a Charizard. I'm not spending 20 bucks on a Charizard. Now, especially because, you know, we got the auditions tomorrow. So we got to run out mm-hmm. to space. Mm-hmm. Had to buy a tripod, had to print out scripts. So I'm just like, you know, there's a quote of the Bible where it's like, you know, you know, there's a part of your life where you got to be a man and put your child, this child of things behind you. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, I'm going to put down a Charizard box set thingy and I'm just going to walk away. I got to leave this thing behind, right? So I'm placing it down and then I start seeing Pokemon, De- P- Detective, po- P- P- Detective Pikachu Pokemon rappers laid out all over the place, like packets of them. And I'm just like, Hold on now. What is this? I'm seeing like the whole package is open. And I'm just like, oh, somebody was stealing cars. Oh, they had a control. Then I see the actual big, did the same thing I was about to buy. But now it was pretty much empty. The only one thing that was left was the giant Charizard card. And I'm like, oh, damn. Somebody really, really wanted that card so bad. Mm-hmm. Then I started seeing, I'm like, wait, what is that down there? Is that a Jigglypuff? Moved the, I had to move the Yu-Gi-Oh box to a side. I'm like, hold on. I drop everything else in my hand. Start moving shit behind the counter and everything. I start seeing more cards. I'm like, is that a side duck? Hold on now. I was like, oh, man. They, knowing them, they probably already took the Charizard. Oh, my God. It's a Charizard. Charizard, I found you so, all. Yeah. I take the Charizard. I don't know if it counts as stealing because I didn't open it. It was just there. I don't know if that counts. Yo, that's that's lost that's and found. That's damaged. Te- that technically, that's, damaged goods. that's not damaged. You didn't damage it. It fell on the floor. It's technically garbage. Either or, it, 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 I, I saved twenty dollars by being nosy and <laughs> trusting your and gut. And looking right? for the item that you were really right. looking for. You know, and that's the funny thing about opportunities. You know, they say. You know, if you're looking for it, you will find it. But, you know, if you're like, and that's the thing with opportunity. Sometimes opportunities go right by people, and because they're not thinking about that opportunity, you know, the same way you would, you know, you want a new car, but the opportunity to come up where you would I like, was just as soon about as you decide. to say that. Like, I was about to say, it's so funny how Carl ended up saving like $20. And it's like, today, I was literally, like, without even thinking about it, when I called these people, so pretty much long story short, like, my car, my, my dear truck, Bane, RIP. 
he got booted in my driveway. Um, they came, picked him up, took him, and they were just like, "Yeah, they, <laughs> like." And the messed I up cried. thing is, I cried. I was. They didn't was even crying. write down anything. Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, but to you, to this today at work, you know, I'm I'm upset. I'm depressed, and I call off. I call over to the office, and they're just like eight hundred and eleven dollars, and I'm like eight hundred and eleven dollars. Oh God! Oh God! So. I'm ready, like, just take my money and give me my truck. And she's just like, nope, we need this, 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 this. And I'm just, like, calculating in my head, and it was well over $1,000. And I was just like, you know what? I hope you guys enjoy the truck. <laughs> and uh, your truck now. <laughs> you can have the truck. <laughs> and at this at that same time, I went online and found a car. Um, French and I actually went today to look at the car and it was posted for 900 and we're actually we're gonna get it for seven so i'm actually like we're actually coming out of pocket less for getting my truck back on the road well not getting the truck back on the road but getting him in the driveway just to sit there like we're, we're gonna pay the same amount and actually have a working vehicle taking us from point a to point b i'm good look at Keep god the truck. look at god y'all. Keep the truck. look at god it, that's wonderful. And that's I had wonderful. that truck for 20 years. Sure. Well, time to start new, fresh, and moving forward. Right. Mm-hmm. Now. But instead of moving forward, we're going to actually go back to our yeah, usual... Because exactly. cool. if you guys don't listen to the show often, we have these segments. And the first segment of the week is the Kinky History. history. Yeah. And the, which made me, the thing that made me think about this Kinky History is when I was at Target today, you know, because I, I, I was really there looking for my tripod before I was looking at the Pokemon stuff. You know, as I'm sitting there, you know, I like to walk through the book aisles. I love looking at books. You guys know me. I'm a big-ass bookworm. I love books. Mm-hmm. So I'm going through the, the, the book aisle, and I'm seeing, you know, all the different Disney novelizations. You know, they had the, the, the book version of Dumbo. They had extra stories that happened before Endgame where Thor and Groot and, um, what's the right name again? Um... I can't remember the raccoon's name. You know the raccoon I'm talking about. I know the raccoon you talk about, but I don't know his name. It's good. Rocket. 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 I, listen, I'm just happy I know what raccoon you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there was books on, you know, their adventures before Endgame. I'm just like, man, Disney be just pushing out books. And then I thought there was like three different, like, there's a whole bunch of different Aladdin books. Ooh, that's and, the next movie that's coming out, right? Yeah, that's coming out next week. Not, oh, God, that's another so, one. So, and I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking about the original story. I'm like, yo, the original story was kind of kinky and dangerous and scary at the same time like if, that, if they knew like Aladdin would probably be a lot darker movie if it came straight from the original source if, yeah, so, so the, a lot of these freaking Disney movies a lot are, of them yeah like a lot of stories actually like are, are dark and, and Disney just prettied it up yeah smacked it with some like nah we got we gotta slap a clown on it <laughs> and then like, we got we gotta yeah, make it look pretty make it look pretty like shoot so the original story was uh, was called One Thousand and One Nights, and yes, One Thousand and One Nights. That's a lot of nights. That's a lot of nights. Sex or talking? No, no. It's just, uh, it's, 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 technically, it's, it's, well, let me tell you what happened. So the story is about this this ruler, right? The mm-hmm. Sasanian king who was ruling India and China, right? And he was shocked to find out that his brother's wife was unfaithful, and that his own wife infidelity was, you know, out of control as well. So he like, fuck that. I'm going to kill her. Got her killed, right? Oh, right? Okay. So he, in his bitterness, off, right? in his bitterness and grief, he decided that all women were the same. Like, fuck these hoes. All these hoes ain't nothing yeah. but, you know, what was it? Women ain't nothing but hoes and tricks. Yeah, that's what so he was. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was going ham. I, I'm trying to think of all the crazy shit that, but I can't think of any. That was the most, the, the most crazy one I can think of. Um, uh, but yeah, all women are the same. They ain't shit. These hoes ain't loyal. I ain't do. I ain't doing this shit no more. You know. So he decided that he was just gonna go ahead and you know he's gonna soak his royal oats, right? But you know he was still bitter and shit like that. So he decided, all right, I'm gonna start marrying virgins, but I'm gonna kill him the next morning. What? Yep, that was his thing. He was like, I'm gonna marry him. I'm going to fuck him, and I'm going to fucking kill him off before she has a chance to violate me. I'll never let another woman violate me again. I will kill her before she even thinks about violating me again. So he will deflower a virgin and then murder her. You know? So, what do you call it? There was a point when they were just running out of virgins because they were just killing everybody. 
Yeah. yeah. So the guy who that he had, like whose duty, the visor, whose duty was to provide him with the virgins or whatever, his daughter was, you know, offering herself up as a bride. Her, her dad's like, what, what? You, what you doing? The fuck like, if you you think why would, my question is, why would any, after a while, people have to be spreading the word like, that this person is killing off a whole bunch of virgins? Like, I don't care if you're the king or not. Like, wait, why? why, why like, did, he get married? Like, did he get married two weeks ago? That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, mean, I was at the wedding. I baked shit. the cake. I baked the cake. <laughs> No, 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 no. Another cake again? Let like, me get somebody knocking on my door talking about uh, the king will like your daughter. Yo, what, no, first of all, what happened to the last chick she Pineapples. fell? Into what, a knife? Pineapples. Bro, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, on the night of their marriage, she begins to tell the king a tale, but she never ends it. And every time, every day, she tells him another. You know, she the story continues, and the king is just curious about how these stories end. So he's just forced to keep postponing the execution in order to hear the conclusion. And as soon as she finished one story, she continues with another. And you know, he just it just goes on for one thousand and one nights. Oh, she survived. <laughs> so, so she figured it out. Uh, <laughs> She's like, let me she talk was to the me. Einstein. <laughs> how many um, years is that? <laughs> she was. <laughs> oh God. Well, what do you call it? Six nine. Oh, shit. You know, but eventually, you know, they end up having kids. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. She, she, she actually survived as his wife. She, this is, we're talking about years. And, and, and not until he sees the kids that he decides not to kill her. Like, you know what? We got kids now. I don't think you know? she's going to cheat. And other things happened that made him distracted. But, you know, eventually he spares her life. But, you know, that's, according to history... I mean, he had a laugh about it, though. <laughs> Heavily. So here's the thing when it comes to this story. So, one, the story is basically where we get the, sto- the idea of cliffhangers from. Every time we watch a show, there's a cliffhanger or a comic book. Cliffhangers came from that story of, you know, like, oh, gotta wait till tomorrow to hear the rest of this story. <laughs> Apparently, that also comes from that. And one of those stories that she told was a story about, you know, the um, Arabian Nights, which is also known as Aladdin mm-hmm. through Disney's eyes. And that's the kinky history behind Aladdin. So that's he kept her around because... She, she told kept, good stories. Because it's curiosity, curiosity killed, killed the cat. <laughs> that's no the curiosity reason. saved this <laughs> shit. Listen, he was curious. He was curious. <laughs> like, well, you know, if you want to know the rest of this Wait, story... You're like, oh, he, he got a genie? Oh, we got a he, genie? He got a genie? We got a genie? Is he, is he gonna the whip? carpet can fly? I gotta know. I really don't know which is the difference. There's a whole dance routine? What? What uh, was his three wishes? Well, you know damn well the the, the, the um the uh the whole dance routine with Disney that was not something. That, but um, Imagine though. but from what I've heard, it actually there was actually more than one wish. It wasn't one wish in the original story. In the original story, there, there was multiple wishes. Uh, isn't the Miss Wishes three? That's how in the movie it's three. Yeah. But you know, originally, I I, I read if it was seven. I'd have been like, I want that one. But not like Dragon Ball, you only get one. That is actually an interesting story. Right? And I'm like, I'm actually want to read it, the thousand, uh, thousand One Nights, just based over that. Like, what's that all about? You know, but, um, if you know, know the that story, story has come back since the eight, that, that, well, the story of Aladdin showed up, like, in the 18th century. And, you know, it's, uh, one of the, oh, one of the books has been adapted over and over and over she and over again. She probably wrote the book. <laughs> she, she said, look, I told the story to save my life. I can't remember what you call it. Because there's actually a couple live action Aladdin. This, 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 this is the first Disney live action Aladdin. But um, a lot of, you know, and when it comes to the Disney one, a lot of characters are renamed. You know, the, the sorcerer, and, and, you know, Jafar, you know, the princess, they're all renamed because her name wasn't Jasmine in the original one. And there was more, different motivations for why they wanted the genie. And what to call it? I don't think Genie got his freedom at the end. I don't think in the original one. I don't think so. Yeah. But, oh, and what do you call it? It went, it went from China to the fictional Arabian city of Agrabah. Hmm. Yeah, so I did The original one is in China. Imagine Disney made it in China, like, like to set in China. That would be something. Oh, I, Asian, I, mean, I mean, there are Indian Asians in China. So... You know, there is a Bollywood version version of um, Aladdin, too. It came out in 2009. I, 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 I want to see... I guess that one, like, if Disney got a whole lot of dancing and singing in there, imagine what the Bollywood one looks yeah. like. The Bollywood one probably would dance you to death. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's beautiful, but I, every time I'm hanging with any of my Indian friends, like, hey, you want to check out a Bollywood movie? I'm like, sure. I'll be sitting there, and I'm just like, bruh, they dance for everything. 
Like, American musicals, we did a lot of dancing, too, but... Whew. My feet will be... Oh, God, no. There's a video online where Will Smith decides he wanted to be in a Bollywood movie, and he decides to do a whole musical number. I want to see it. Yeah. Do it with my feet. There's a there's a whole Jackie Chan movie where the end the movie ends with the Bollywood dance number. I kid you not. The movie ends. It was nothing but a huge fight scene all the way throughout the whole movie. Then at the end, here big old Bollywood number. Which movie? I think it's um it's one of Jackie's last movies, like twelve something. I, I, I give it a name. It's one of the movies he actually directed too, actually. But you know, I, it, it's very family friendly. Believe it or not, it's a very family friendly Jackie Chan movie. But um, I just remember I was watching that scene. And I was like, "This is cute," but thank God it's at the end of the movie. I want to be able to do this the whole movie. Like this would get annoying at one point, you know. I mean, it's 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 a culture thing, you know. It works for some cultures, you know. I don't know how much but the dancing of determination to keep doing it for hours, and your feet is not bleeding. I would hate to hit, like it's get into a fight with one of them dudes and they kick me. Like that's a solid foot. No, but just... I mean, what? you know, dancing for hours every day. We, it's, it's I mean, they dance the for culture. days. It's part of the culture. That's what they do. Yeah, that's part of the culture. You know, and it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. So if you like it, there's nothing wrong for liking it. Oh no, it's a it's a beautiful thing. I like how like every culture is beautiful in their own way, and the the way that they dance and they're and they're so colorful. Right. The way that their uh, clothes are. This oh. So, so I think the movie was called Kung Fu Yoga. I believe it was that one. I gotta see that. Yeah, it was Kung Fu Yoga because it was released in India in February third, twenty seventeen. So yeah, and you know the ending dance number was choreographed by Farah Khan. Not Farah Khan, the nation of Islam, but they got per- the, the person's name is Farah Khan. And you know they're they're any film director you know I think, oh I think she's an actress I'm sorry and you know she, you know director producer actress dancer choreographer you know and she's known for all her you know choreography on numerous you know dance routines in um, Bollywood movies so shout out to all those people and everybody who loves Bollywood movies because you know we're gonna do a Bollywood movie one day and it's gonna look so it's just you're like what are they doing in Bollywood but anyways so. What is this tip of the week? This tip of the week, I had it, <coughs> and then I had to reload it. So it kind of sent me back to the top page. <laughs> reload. You got to reload it. <laughs> oh, um, I think I remember it is about, uh, don't forget about the neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't forget about the neck. It is a very sensitive area. I'm sorry, I'm still looking for it. I just remember, I just remember that. Exactly. Oh. Don't neglect the neck. There we go. Found it, people. Where's your source? Mm, the source? The website. It's not a website. It's, it's it. well, it's it from... is a website. Oh. The website is menshealth.com. Oh, men's health. Oh, okay, sorry. so men's health is the source. So it says the neck is super sensitive and it's one of the sexiest places to stimulate your partner during foreplay or intercourse. We recommend trailing your lips from her collarbone to her jaw, then gently kissing her neck. Yeah, yeah guys, I hope y'all yeah. wrote that down. Yeah, I have done that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep in mind how I um I started reading that fine, uh-huh. and as I got to that ending, uh-huh. and, like I started picturing it, uh-huh. I started like stumbling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that does work. That does nice. That does. Yeah. That that does. Stop. Yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy? When I hear stories about people who don't do things like that in bed, I'm just like, what, what, how did you learn how to uh-huh. sex? Like, where'd you, how, you, how did you learn how to have sex? Like, where, you know, like, I don't know. It, it just, you know, I've been talking to girls and they tell me the experience. I'm just like, that that dude don't feel like he... He knows what to do. No, he, he, he don't know nothing. They niggas don't know how to do shit. Like, they can just put their dick in and be like... Uh, I'm done. Like, hey, I'm having sex. Uh, well, this yeah. is sex, right? <laughs> it's just in and stays there. I'm, in, no, I'm like, in here. Motion. You know, can you feel it? It's in there somewhere. It's probably fucking, yeah, I can feel it. It's my leg, though. Like, so. <laughs> Some dudes, they, you know, are selfish lovers, you know? And guys, if you want to be able to keep hitting it, don't be a selfish lover. Be passionate. Be very passionate. You know, I, my whole thing is, like, you know, you start in romantic, and then you treat, then you fuck like a slut later on, okay? <laughs> exactly. You, you lead in very with the passion, and make it all romantic and sens- sensual, and then go crazy. Go crazy. Unless you're in a beast out, ladies and gentlemen. 
Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, each girl is different, so you don't know. Some girls might actually want you to start off wild and crazy and then go in sensual. You know, they might want yeah, to... that's for, like, round two. See, but nah, I... some girls some want, want you to come in throwing them against the fucking wall. Yes. And fucking ripping their shit apart. That's how you supposed apart. to do. I've had girls literally, like, start fight with me just so they could get me to fucking, like, fucking bear hug the shit out of them and throw them against the wall and all this. Well. And it's just like... Oh, no. and that's I, what I, they need. It was, oh, I never, no. Yeah. That's, 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 that's my first Scorpio. And I, I learned from them. And I, oh, yeah, 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 oh, I do too much. Yeah. You gotta say Scorpio. Scorpio. I was like, yeah, 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 like I know, like that's how I knew she wanted to fuck is when she started throwing punches at me. You're like, come on now, can't you just say it? Say, say it with your words. Stop saying it with your fists, girl. Say it with your words. Jesus, come on now. Way too aggressive. I would have ended that relationship. A like, come on time. now. Sorry, like, like your like, booty Yo, too box. soft for you to be this hard. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm come around. on. I'll be like, here's the boxing gloves when you're ready. Vaseline too. Get the mouth guard. Let's go. Frenchie would, Frenchie would do that too. Yeah, right, right. Frenchie, Frenchie would. <laughs> Frenchie would. I like my Frenchie, the other day I had Frenchie with his legs tied. Like he couldn't move. And all I was using was my legs. I used my legs to tie and hold his legs down. You see how skinny my legs are compared to his? <laughs> For an hour, he did not give up. An hour. An well, that's hour. A long time. Yeah, that's a long time. They got a lot of time on your hands. That's a long time. I ain't got an hour to be laid up down there like and that. You know like, what? I gotta go. I gotta check it in. I Ooh. still didn't get it that day either. Yeah, what the hell are you holding it for that All morning? of that for what? What was your time of All of that time for what? You was playing around. You know what? Let's not get into it. Next. But kissing the neck. Yes, kiss on the neck, people. That's all you gotta do. It right. works. It works. It works. If she don't want, and, and I hate to say it, but. If, if this is work for for couples who are already doing it and who you know have consistent consent, okay. And I talk about people who just beating up for the first time and try to, but you know, kissing on the neck. If she's like, no, not tonight, no, no. If you <laughs> keep kissing on that neck, she might change her mind. That's all I gotta say. Count I, too many experiences where that worked out for the brother here. I'm just being honest with you. I I know, like I learned really young. Like, I, I realized that, like, my neck was a sensitive spot for me. And it was just, like, I, I, I saw it coming. Mm-hmm. So when a guy would come up, and I definitely was just like, no, I'm not feeling that. And he was just like, all right, let me get your neck. No. <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> the answer I is no. <laughs> get that neck. Get that neck. That is a neck, 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 neck. That neck, that neck, neck. That neck, neck, neck. But you know what? Nothing, nothing. It, it's the my same. Back. It, oh, my <laughs> back. Oh, And neck. This just went someplace else. <laughs> it's supposed, it starts off with the neck. Yeah, you slide down to the back. You never go ass to mouth, though. Yeah, you turn it around and then you spread it out and be like, I'm going for this side. Right? I've never gone to ass, though. I'm telling you. God, I'm waiting for Oprah with the, with the 100 million before I do that. Like, yeah. He's like, yo, yo, he's really consistent about quick this Quick side shit. note, real quick. I forgot to tell you this. What's up? Remember, um, well, of course, <coughs> we had the... um. The podcast where you know we asked you if you would ever you know have sex with Oprah, right? And Frenchie had showed you that picture of Oprah in that like dominatrix outfit, right? So I'm in the office and my coworker comes up to me, whole different department. He mm. walks up to me, and he goes, "So Oprah looks kind of hot," and shows me the same. Well, no, no, not the same exact picture, <laughs> a different picture uh-huh. of Oprah wearing the same outfit uh-huh. in a different you know pose or whatever right. so I look at it and I'm like hey you know I brought up the podcast right. and then I was like matter of fact I got the picture we used I showed it to him uh-huh. we realized it was two different pictures but the backgrounds were the same wow that's crazy like that's crazy I, was, I actually used that, 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 the picture to promote the podcast yeah yes. and the whole time he was just like not for nothing if Oprah was like this I would do her right I was like what I would have. T- you should have told him, yo. I'll let that butt hundred million dollars. Hundred, million, wait, hundred, yeah, yeah, hundred million. Hundred million. Twenty five for Rihanna though. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they do shit before I get the two shit, it's okay. I'm t- and that's okay. Hundred million. I mean, twenty five for Rihanna, and she gotta be in the movie. She gotta be in the movie. Okay. Well, I have a question for you. Okay. And I have a question for her. Okay. And I know I've done this, but I know. Have you ever done? 
a blindfold to your partner, or did you ever blindfold yourself and let them do whatever they want? No. Yes. I have not. Definite. Yes. I have not. I am paranoid like a motherfucker. That's actually the first time that a dude ate my booty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't do that. But I had fun with blindfolds. I had fun with giving it? girls it blindfolds. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, guys, that wasn't me. Yo. I ain't much of no booty. She ain't got a hundred million dollars. <laughs> I ain't doing that. I'm too real, <laughs> so. I want to know what America thinks about that, but that's really how it's. Wow. I mean, I gave her the blindfold. I was ex. I kissed everywhere. Yes. Wow. Ooh. She's dying over here, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, Frenchie, you said you love it being blindfolded. She was kissing you everywhere. No, no, no. no. I gave her the blindfold because oh, I'm a little bit paranoid. But I said, you know what? I got you. I don't put on blindfold, but I put it on you. I think I've put blindfolds on uh, girls before, but I don't think I've ever put a blindfold on myself. Uh, I, I, I did it. I think I just... No, did I? Oh, yeah. I was forced to. She... Uh, yeah, actually, I, I was chained down. Yes, I was uh, chained oh, down. I was never. Then I was blindfolded. It was good. Done. It was a good experience. It was a good experience. Something new. I never. But been, I'm not doing it again. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I haven't been in a real relationship since like in a good maybe ten years. It's been a lot of flings for a brother over here. Flings and friends of benefits. I have not done any I, 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 yeah. I. <laughs> That's very interesting. I always wondered that why would couples like it's it's interesting how freaky you would get with people you don't be with forever, but when you go in a relationship, you don't do all the crazy shit. Why is that? I know, we done a lot of crazy shit. I'm not saying you don't have time. shit. But I'm just saying, like, the other... All about time with this shit. But I'm just saying, like, you know, when you're younger, especially when you're, like, 17, 18, 19, you know, you have nothing but time to fuck, so just, you experience, you just figure out all of the yes, shit. no... And then you get older, you just like, yo, I got, I got, I got work in the morning, so we got 45 minutes to pull something <laughs> off real quick. You know what I mean? Like, shit, I was able to plan... Like, yeah, now you have to fucking literally schedule fucking sex. This is like... <laughs> True. Like now, like before, it was just true. like you know you could just pull up to the person's crib, you just chill, and just you know that shit could go on all fucking week if I wanted to do it. But now it's just like nah, I can't. Now do it. it'd be like uh, the the child is gonna get here in thirty minutes. <laughs> right, you, gotta you better hurry I up. Can't. <laughs> you need to hurry up. Right? Like, come on. I'm gonna need you to, to yo why is... work faster. <laughs> but I want to know how America feels about blindfolds. I want to hear some stories. So, yes. Go on Birds and the Bees on Twitter. That's Birds and the Bees with D at the end. And tell us, do you guys prefer sex with blindfolds? Have you ever had sex with blindfolds? And if you're looking to get some blindfolds for, you know, some kinky stuff, go on kinkycandyonline.com. They have a lot in different designs. It's very beautiful. Very kinky. You got some silk ones. They got some, you know, I don't think they got any polyester because we don't, we don't do the polyester. They got some fuzzy ones. That's uh, yeah, true. they got fuzzy ones. <laughs> they got some, you know, they, they got nice, they got some nice ones. So. Yeah, some good ones over there. Please check it out. Go yeah. on the website. Have fun. KingCanyon.com. And please go Birds and the Bees with Z at the end. So, for today's topic, today's main topic, I want to talk about something I read on Twitter. Something I thought was very interesting, because the guy basically out himself to basically, you know, it, it made me laugh at first until I found out what this whole thing was about. But, uh, you know, basically, the guy was like, oh, every girl I've ever had sex with never been enthusiastic about sex or thought, you know, was interested. So that means women aren't interested. Like, no, that means that none of the girl, nobody who had sex with you wanted to have sex, sex with you. Like, <laughs> wow, like, what are you, like, how did you not figure that out by now, brother? Like, what are, what are, we, what are, what are you doing over there? Like, all, all women are not interested in sex. Like, it's just a means to an end for them. They just want to get pregnant and have a kid. Like, what world are you living in? Like, Who whoa. Who means is this? Yeah, for real. What the, we, what, I sent you the tweet. Tell me, what the guy's name on the Twitter? Tell me, I need, we need to shame this man. We need to boo this man. Boo this motherfucker right here. What is this man's name? Because this whole thing is going on because of what's going on with the, I think it's the abortion ban, I believe. I think that's what it's all about. Because, um... Actress Alyssa Milano from Charm and a couple of other projects, she went on a sex strike saying, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not and other women should not be having sex with a man because, you know, they're trying to ban abortion. And then, you know, somebody was trying to shame her on that. Like, oh, I didn't have a dumb idea for them to just have, a, you know, a sex ban. What, you know, you know, this reminds me of the movie Chirac. Have you ever seen Chirac with the Spike Lee movie when they can it? That basically was the plot, but it wasn't about abortion ban. It was basically about gun violence. So... I don't know how that 
works out. In today's day and age. But, you know. Did you see the tweet? Oh, you're looking at the... I don't know. I don't I know said how I found the picture, but uh, I'm looking for the This tweet. dude fetched over here showing me the picture, of, the Photoshop picture of Oprah. Yeah, like, I, I didn't see it. I found it again. Like, yo, here you go. Right, yeah, man. This is, this is, Oprah looks good in leather. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Oprah. Yes. Thank you. So, Larry Witt was... Um, what do you call it? It was on it was on Facebook. So the the quote was Alyssa Milano's sex strike is a liberal is liberal garbage which reference the sexist notion that women are the gatekeepers of sex and don't actually enjoy it. So they only provide or withhold it with with it to manipulate men. And it's also a terrible and ineffective idea because unless you're dating the creepy legislator controlling women's bodies, girls, why would you want to be doing that anyway? That really don't care if you have sex or not. And you're playing into their hands, pointlessly demanding that a nation full of women close their legs. Furthermore, you know, if, uh, so, so what do you call it? So the guy was, um, the woman told the guy, you know, Larry Witt, you know, no, I think her, she, her tweet was, the idea frames sex as something that hetero women are subjected, subjected to rather than enthusiastic participants in. Then Brad Anderson goes, I get that point you're trying to make, but I have yet to meet a hetero woman who enthusiastically participate in sex. So, like, you know, like, like wow. he told on himself right there. Basically. Wow. Like, Bro, what? Like, if every woman you meet is bored, annoyed, or horrified at the idea of sex with you... You have to change your ways. Yeah, the, the, the common denominator is you. It's not girls. <laughs> it's not all women. It's you. <laughs> Something's wrong with you in some type of way that does not turn them on. Because from hell to high water... Well, for starters, you feel like other women, you know, aren't enlightened. By you. Sex. Like, like, there's no way a woman can like sex. Every girl I've ever done it. Yeah. She just stares there and look but at she me. Sits you know? there. She sits there. She, she calls the cab and calls, you know, she plays, she plays Candy Crush while I'm doing her doggy, like... Women don't care about sex. Like, no, bro, they don't care about shit. you. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. This is shit. So, and I, 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 you know, it's crazy. How many what's... times did you do the walk of shame, bro? What do you mean walk of shame? No, how many times they did the walk, walk of shame? shame? Who? The women well, that was in this, that, that. Oh. Or well, maybe they ain't do no walk of shame. They just, hey, we spend time together. I don't know. Either or. Guys, I'm telling you now, if every girl you have sex with is, is not looking like... And if she's not making any sounds, and I, when I say sounds, I don't mean like, no, stop, help, that's bad sounds. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, ooh, let's go. <laughs> stop. Please. Hey. Keep ooh. going. I, come on now. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. She good sounds. You know, and she starts scratching your neck, and pulling you closer. Get but you tighter. She's telling you to stop, but she's you pulling you closer. Her, you know? <sighs> but, I, but, but, you know, if she's not making those noise, then it's just like... She's not making okay. pleasant If she goes, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go, oh, daddy. Go. If you're going... Go, daddy. No, I mean, you could be making noise and still not pleasuring a woman. That don't mean right, shit. Yeah. That don't mean shit. Oh, yeah. could just yeah. be fat. And, 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 and the dude can think he'd be doing something like, yeah. Yeah, who did? Who yo, did it? Who yo, did it? Who did it? Funniest thing I ever seen. Like, yo, oh are. my God, the funniest thing. You are. Yo, the funniest yeah. thing I ever yeah, seen. Yeah, do that, Poppy. Uh huh. Yeah, you got that. You got yo. that, Daddy. Uh huh. No, 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 no. Check this out. Check this out. Yeah, yeah. I got that. I got it. I got it. You got that, Daddy. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Quick question. Did y'all see the video? Oh, there was a video going out of a dude going ham on a girl, like real ham on a girl. And she uh-huh. was like, and she playing, was sitting, no, no, she was laying down, uh, texting someone saying, yeah, girl, just lay down, keep hitting, yeah, oh, you're doing well. Texting someone while he's hitting it. And he's going. I saw a video of one dude going in and the chick is sitting there making a tutorial, making, like, you know, taking food out the fridge. She was uh-huh. making something to eat. I forgot what she was making to eat. And the whole time, dudes behind her just smack, smack, smack. <laughs> and she, like, nothing's going on. Right. And I'm just like, really? That's crazy. Really? That's crazy. She can't even act. How did, we, how did we get here from um, the abortion <laughs> bed? How did we, <laughs> we get... We didn't even get to the abortion <laughs> bed, bro. Yeah, that's what the whole that's thing is. next. <laughs> This is about... Damn. <laughs> he's so far ahead, he's at the abortion battery. I was like, wait, how do we get here? Like, I could have I sworn we started with Alyssa Milano and the, and the fact that she was, you know, doing a sex strike. Well, that's what it was. Yeah, the, the whole sex strike is about the abortion because they believe down south 
now that women should not have control of their body, then, you know, that they should go ahead and, you know, I have actually, the babies. I actually read somewhere that they're that they're trying to pass a law saying that if you have an abortion, not even that if you have an abortion, if you have a, a miscarriage, it's a felony. What? what? Yes. I was reading if you try to leave the state and have an abortion, it's against the law. Like, you, you, it don't matter if you was raped, no matter if it's incest, it don't matter. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's true, so don't, like, really quote me on it, and I'll, I'll look into it. And, like, I'm sure it's out. true. But there, I, I, it was Yo, one, of the, one of the states likes. down south. They're, like, trying to pass a, a bill saying, like, you have a miscarriage, that's a felony. How the fuck can that, then that means you better hide your own shit. Be like, fuck it. Mind you, you if you have a miscarriage, that's a that yeah, a female cannot control that. Right. Nobody can control. Oh my God. Where they go? That's why I'm confused about this whole thing. Like, what are they trying to do now? Like, yeah, you can't now. Like, you know how? Like, you know who's gonna win the most out of this? The birth control industry is about to rise up like crazy. Like, uh-huh. can nobody can afford a baby? They're like, no, the government will lock me up if I try to get rid of this baby. You know what's crazy? If we did that short last week about the abortion, it would mean something completely different now in this con- in the context of what's going on in this climate right now. You know, it's actually out of control, and it just like it doesn't make any sense because it's just like, how how the hell is this possible? Like, like this this like I I I I I generally believe like things are about to change for the worse. Like, if this is what they're doing now, just for women's bodies and reproductive rights, imagine what's next. Imagine what's next. Next, they're gonna control how we have sex. Like, they're already trying to control who we have sex with. You know, like I always tell people, that's not my fight for gay rights or whatever. But yeah, yeah, there's a chance they're reversing a lot of laws. So there's a chance a couple of gay dudes' marriage is not even considered legal anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, so. and this isn't the first time that like they try to come out and say like, all right, look, you know, there's been laws passed around like all these gay marriages they're not legal. Like there's been a couple of times that like couples that I that I know. Like have like worried like yo like are we even legally married or not? Right. That's sad, man. It like, is. It really, it really is. Like if you, it, it's see love, <laughs> see this is see this is what I think it is. Love is not supposed to be. It's supposed to be who you want to be with for the rest of your life. With it doesn't matter if it's a man or female. Uh, if yeah, if you can find love, I, hey, who am I to tell you otherwise? <laughs> like let's be real. Yes, love is hard to find. Exactly. And you find somebody that you love and they love you and they trying to make things work and it's consistent and y'all ready to commit. And hey, do what it do. Do what you got to do. Because that is hard to find. And oh, if you find somebody well, who's willing to do that with you, then hey. That's what I'm saying. See, like, and it's find someone. <laughs> if you could find somebody that makes you happy, like whether it's a male or female, yeah. transgender, like I work with every and all see, types of people. See, that's another thing. Then we hear about I don't have I don't want to make you happy. I want you to naturally be happy. Right. That's how Just I be work. happy with whoever likes you and don't try to push it on other people cuz I found out about this blogger, makeup dude or whatever. He was trying to push up on heterosexual dudes and he was like violating and you know, harassing straight guys. And now he's losing like millions of followers and everything oh, yeah, like that. I, heard about that I forgot his name. He, a lot of people have to forget his name. Yeah, but, I forgot <laughs> his name too. But uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, I, yeah, a lot of people like. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. you know? If you want people to respect you and your sexuality, respect other people's sexuality. Okay. Like I'm a straight guy, and I've hang around gay people, and I, and, and, you know. I, I will let them know, like, hey guys, I'm. I'm respect uh, you, know. you, respect you. Yeah, right. I respect you guys as long as you, you know. I, I you know, I, I don't care. You're white, black, gay, straight, gay, straight. It doesn't matter as long as you respect me. I will respect you. You know, that's all. That's all it is. You know. Speaking of gay rights and gay marriage, you know, uh, Arthur, the show Arthur. Remember Arthur? Yeah. On, on PBS. Yeah. You know, so. I didn't even know they still make episodes, but they're still making episodes. The episode, they're making like 800 episodes or whatever right now, right? Mm-hmm. And in this new episode, one of Arthur's teachers is getting married to another man. They're doing gay weddings now on Arthur. I found that so interesting. I was like, well, look how far TV has gone. Yeah. And you're doing it to my child. Okay, though. I, like, and I've seen nothing wrong with it. 
I don't see nothing wrong with it. I, I mean, kids are going to figure it out it. either or. Because I remember when but I was a kid, I figured about gay people early on. Because, one, you know, my actual last name is gay. So, people were, when people were laughing, I had to figure out why they were laughing. That's one. <laughs> and two... But I'll never forget it. My mom had this book. My mom, my mom had a curious mind. That's where I get it from. But you know, she, she I think she was with the flea market. And it was like books for a dollar. And one of the books and there was like how to how to raise, uh, how to uh, uh, how to book for gay for gay uh, parents to raise the kid or whatever. So right, and I, I see the and I'm looking at the cover. And my mom, that's how I interested my mom. This is before the internet where you could just look up stuff. <laughs> You know, uh, so you know, if you wanted, God, if you, you were curious book. about something, you, you just had to buy. You it. had to buy a book and look into it, even if it, was, it wasn't about your lifestyle. You just was curious, so sure, because my mom was not gay at all. Yeah, she was just really. I asked her about it on the kid. I was like, "Mom, you're not gay. Why you have this book?" She's like, "I'm curious. I want to know what it says." You know how do gay people raise how do, what the difference between gay parents raising their kids? You know, and you know, and that, as a kid, I remember that. So growing up. I wasn't weirded out by gay people because I knew they existed from Jump Street. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'm upset that they're showing it because showing gay people is not going to make your kid gay because... I saw gay people and I did not turn gay oh, once. Exactly. So I, I'm like, I don't think that's how that works, guys. I don't think it works where you see gay people now you're gay. I don't think that works. Now if you're telling them that, hey, you're a gay kid, then I think that's a little different. But you know, we, that's not the conversation we're having. And I, don't, I hope that's not the conversation you're having at home telling your no, kids you that they're be. gay. You know, let, let everybody be whatever sexual preference they want to be. Let them figure it out themselves. I mean, yeah, let them figure out the same, but I would say at the uh, 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 right age limit. Let every let yeah. kids be kids. Like, let them be kids. At an age limit, then you can start, like, cracking down and doing everything else. But I... At the end of the day, I can tell you, I don't see myself falling in love with no man. You know, and I watched a lot I mean, of gay stuff what, growing that's up. What I'm saying. Like, I, like wait, what do you call it? Was gay? Um, hmm. Well, I'm trying to think of other stuff. So, like, Mr. Ogilvy, I always knew he was gay. He remember? The, oh, Stanley Ogilvy. Yeah, the actor? yeah. Like, and uh, I had this uh, this woman uh, this, who who used to be He's my very tutor. Feminine. He was very feminine. I had a, a woman who, who who she was a dancer for the Alan Avery Company or whatever. So she knew a lot, she met a lot of dealt with a lot of celebrities, and she would just tell me all the time which celebrity was gay. And I was like, no way. She's like, yeah, Uncle Phil, he's gay. And I was wow. like, what? Uncle Phil? Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, the cop from family. But you know, Uncle yeah, the Phil, cop from had, family. He, he had his moments too. What? Uncle Phil? Uh-huh. Every now and then, like, oh, I, 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 I saw, he had his moments. There was one blooper where they went, um, the dude who, from Mr. Jefferson came on the show. And Will Smith and him were kidding around and, and then the blooper. And they're like, yeah, he taught you a lie. He's like, yeah, he told me like, like yeah, what he told you? He's like, he told me how to beep. And the audience, you know, everybody laughing and shit. But I was like, what did you teach, mm -hmm. what you teach you, Uncle Phil? What was that? What was that? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. You know, gave, that's because, oh, seen RuPaul. I seen RuPaul a lot growing up. Mm -hmm. I, you don't, you don't see me cross dressing right now. The very first time I seen RuPaul? Where? The very first time I saw RuPaul was in that episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I forgot oh, RuPaul yeah. was in there. That's the very first time I saw Yo. RuPaul. And I, and I, I, I promise you, I, I saw, when I first saw him, or her, when I first saw her, I'm sorry, she was in full drag. And I was like, that's not a woman. <laughs> and I was like, but, but it looks like a woman. And I was like, I'll go with it. I'll go with it. I remember seeing RuPaul in a Spike Lee movie called Crooklyn. It was a dude, a dude who owned a bodega, and, you know, his woman was RuPaul. And I just remember there was a scene where they're dancing, and a little girl's just staring at RuPaul. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on here? And I'm looking at RuPaul, and I'm like, huh, something's not right about it. Like, I see I see a tight dress, I see boobs, but that face, mm -hmm. that, that, I don't know what's going on there. And it was at least 20 years before I saw RuPaul outside of drag. 20 years went by before I saw RuPaul with just... No wig, no makeup, and a suit. I was like that. Mm -hmm. Like I, if they didn't tell me that was RuPaul, I would have never known it. Like what? You know, it's, <laughs> when I when I first saw it, like it's still in the, in the same episode. Mm -hmm. Is when I saw they had they had her out of drag, uh -huh. and I saw with, with without the wig, the right. suit, and I, and I was just like, I knew it. <laughs> I don't know how they did it, <laughs> but I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, even then, I remember, like, not even understanding what was going on. I uh, just thought that they just put 
put him into like mm-hmm. an outfit and it was just like oh they did a really good job and right. then like growing up I didn't realize like years later mm-hmm. I saw RuPaul That's again what... in the, in, with his own show and everything mm-hmm. and I was like oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you, know what, you know what I realized after a while in media there's this you know they there's this trans there's a, there's a homophobia against you know trans people and gay people it's you know like the, when I think of movies like Hangover Two, when they do find out he had sex with a tranny, you know, what I mean? oh, like, like granted, I, I think I would probably react the same way. As, 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 <laughs> no, you know no, I mean? no, 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 no. Like I was like, no, no, Jesus, no, why? <laughs> but you know, like <laughs> what made me think about this? Because I, you know, there was this video I saw at the Museum of Sex. I kid you not, this dude was getting a head from another dude, and then he killed him with a with a giant hammer and just just beat his head in. And when I was telling one of the people that worked there about it, I was like, that's very disturbing. Why the hell are we playing this here? That's, that's not, like, you know, it's part of the punk exhibit. And I'm just like, that's a very gross thing to, you know, put on. And yeah, she was like, yeah, that's horrible because back in the day, back, you know, when, um, because, you know, gay was all legal and stuff like that, you know, people, you know, gay guys being killed left and right. Guys would show up and wait for dudes to do gay shit and then kill them. Mm-hmm. And I heard they do that right now in Russia. This, this, this. They still do that now here. Oh, that's crazy. It's in the news. Like, you know, like, like there was one time a, a couple of years ago, there was one guy going around on the gay, like, apps, mm-hmm. and he would just meet up with, like, gays at, like, hotels, motels or whatever, and mm-hmm. just kill them in the room. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's scary as hell. That's mm-hmm. fucked up. That's crazy as hell. For somebody to be, just because, I'm not, okay, look. Hey man, I believe. I, I there's, believe there's stories in, in like down life. south with it going on. I follow this um this transgender woman on Instagram, mm-hmm. and she's down south, and she's like, oh, she had posted a, a a post, and she was like, you know, R.I.P. Another one down, you know, another transgender woman down because she, you know, mm-hmm. the guy found out she's transgender. Right. Like, it's sad. Uh, it's fucked up. But uh, yo. my thing is, you know, you know me, guys. I'm a Christian at heart. You know, I may not be the best Christian at all time. You know, I'm probably one of the. I'm, I'm not one of the worst, but I'm not one of the greatest ones either. But you know, what I believe in, I'm not gonna sit here and beat you over the head with it and tell you, hey, you better leave according to this book. But I, I gotta live according to the book the way I, you know, this, you know, it's my life. Too, I gotta live it the way I gotta live it. You know, if you wanna live that life, that's your life. That's your choice. You know, I be, we all have that God-given right to make a choice in our life, and that's the life you want to live. That is your choice. I will not deny you of your pleasures for that. You know, as long as you don't try to fuck me, we <laughs> all get a dandy, all right? Facts. We all get a dandy. I will show you all the love in the world just like you're my own brother or sister, all right? Just, we just you know, we can sit here, we can talk movies, we can talk musicals, we can talk art. I, I, we, I don't, talk we can talk anything. We can even talk about sex. As long as we don't get into too much details, we can even talk about sex. You know, it's just, you know, like that like, whatever that guy who said the evil about the prostate can't, not the prostate cancer, the prostate toys. Yeah, prostate, from prostate toys. massage mm-hmm. and all that stuff. I was like, whew, I wasn't ready for that one. But, you know, we had that conversation. So, you know. I'm down to talk, just you know, to cross, don't cross the boundaries, you know, and keep it in the talking. And way. I feel like for guys, straight guys who can't deal with that, because I've I've been around a lot of guys who are very homophobic. They're like, no, I can't be around them. Those are, you know, they, they all say the f word like crazy or whatever. It took me forever to be like, yo, you can't say the f word. But um, you know, it's like you know they really can't, they can't, they can't do it. They're like, nah, bro, I can't, I, I. I can't believe, and you know, like I remember one guy who like, oh, I'll never see a Tyler Perry movie. Screw, uh, screw Martin Lawrence, screw Tyler Perry for putting on dresses and da 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 da. I don't like, you know, is that you know, does, does it really fuck up your life that bad mm-hmm. to see them in a dress? Mm. You know, you know, like, I used to think it was funny, but it's not funny anymore. No. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, at one point I thought I subscribed to that, but then I, you know, look, I rewatch White Chicks. You know, mm-hmm. Big Mama's house, the first one. Mm-hmm. You know, the clumps. Mm-hmm. You know, Tyler Perry, Medea, Annie Medea. It's just like, come on now. You can't tell me that stuff wasn't funny. Norbit. Right? Oh, I love Norbit. <laughs> I love Norbit. People want to talk shit about my... All right, come on now. Daddy professor. Like, oh, fuck the drag queen. And like, ah, yeah, I just hate it. You know, if you don't like it, don't watch it. It is that. 
You know, my straight ass is gonna go watch it, mm. no matter what. So it's just like, hey man, you know, I'll be fine. I, 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 okay, I, I, I'm telling you now. I don't think I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. Like you guys, you know what I need tomorrow? I think I'm gonna need. I'm gonna get me a dress and a wig. <laughs> You know, I think I think I, I want to go out and dread the dress. I think man. if we were to ever get that phone call, uh, we would stop everything. We're like, all right, bro, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to sit down and talk. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. <laughs> I need to get this dress. We'll take you to get the dress. Let's just sit down and talk, talk. for a little bit, right? Like, wait. Let's have let's have our talk. Is it for you or somebody else? <laughs> like, we gotta ask questions about this. Like, what's the usage of this dress? I want to put the dress on. All right, Wait, come on. Nah, nah, come on, no, 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 no. We're staying away <laughs> from all today. It's so pretty. I got to dance for it. Yes, doctor, I need your help. <laughs> oh, we would. I need to send him direct. No, we go into the hospital now. <laughs> Give me the best doctors. <laughs> Help me out now. Make sure. And we're only, they, 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 and I know we're making jokes here, people, but the, the joke is they will only do that because they know I'm a straight guy and a straight guy wouldn't do that. That doesn't mean if you were a gay person and you had those stuff, you decide to get a dress, that somebody needs to call the hospital or the cops on you. Please, no. That's not what we're saying. That's here. not what we're I saying. Feel like, not. I feel like I should make that clear. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's just let people much. know. Like, I mean, I've, I've actually gone with my gay friends to go pick out dresses. Like... I have. I've never gone shopping with my gay friends, but I've definitely no, I don't think been that. around gay friends, watching them put makeup on, mm. put on dresses and stuff like that. I've definitely been around no. that. Mm-hmm. My best friend from day one, you know, we, when the first time we did it, he, uh-huh. he forgot I was there because I was filming, and he was like, "Oh snap! This is the first time you, mm. you 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 know you wear makeup. I can't believe you're filming." You, you know, he's like, "Is this weird for you?" I'm like, "The only thing that's weird is like you're not throwing the middle finger up to the camera like you used to." <laughs> 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 That's weird right now. And you know, not for nothing, a lot of like really good makeup artists are gays. They be doing their thing. Yeah, I be watching. I I'll, I'll watch like I'm not even into makeup. I don't. You, when do you ever see me wearing makeup? Right. Like never. I, like, and I'm. When do I wear make, makeup? Once in a blue. Listen. Blue, uh, like. Listen. The moon has to be really, really blue and shiny. As All right, blue. really blue. Nice. But I, I'll, I'll sit there and and, and watch. Tutorials on YouTube, random, and it's just like, oh, you doing your thing? Oh, a lot of them. Well, well, that was this episode of the Birds and the Bees. We hope you learned a thing or two. This week we have a special call to action. You know, I don't know how much help we can do when it comes to this whole abortion ban thing, but the best thing I can say is to like, hey spread the word that this is going on. Everybody over here talk about Game of Thrones and not focusing on the fact that mm-hmm. if you get a girl pregnant in certain states, there's a chance that she will go to jail if y'all try to get rid of it. You know? Like, I'm not... You know, I like like we said when we were talking about the abortion thing, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pro-choice or if I'm anti-abortion. I'm not sure what it is. You know, I, I always say it depends on the situation you win, you know? Because <laughs> my mom is the most Christian woman on this planet. And as soon as she thought I was about to have a baby when I was 17 years old, she was like, get rid of that shit. Get rid of it. Thank God, you know, and that's the same thing, God, we had a miscarriage. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's a felony. <laughs> <laughs> right? A miscarriage. If that happened today, shorted, like the girl who was supposed to have my seed probably could go to jail. And that's crazy, y'all. That's fucking crazy. Can you imagine, like, being, like, a fe- like being a female? I, I am a female. I can't even picture myself being in jail, like, what you went for. I had a miscarriage. <laughs> like, yo. Like, really? Me too. Shit. That shit changes everything. Everything. Who came up with that law? Just a whole and bunch you know of white what? guys? As females, it would screw us over because we wouldn't, like... We okay. What if we, we know that we're pregnant? Mm-hmm. Like we wouldn't even go to the doctors because we wouldn't like. Yeah, that's gonna risk. Exactly. You're putting, you know, that's gonna, gonna make it hot until like the you know yeah. sixth, seventh month. Like for a definite fact, yeah, I'm gonna have it. <laughs> All right, we're going to the doctors. Yeah, I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> like clearly, there's, there's not a burrito in there. <laughs> You're not constipated, darling. <laughs> It just keeps growing. Keeps growing. Keeps growing. Wait, the belly button popped out? Wait, that's a sign. 
So you really, you know, it's. I, I, I hate to sit here, but you gotta be careful, ladies, because that's not the that's not the way things are supposed to be. Where you gotta be careful because uh-huh. you know having a bit, not having a baby now can mean jail time. So what I want to say is, ladies and gentlemen. Right to who the ever the fuck you got a right to, and be, and stop this shit, all right? Because you know not everybody is on you know gonna want to follow you know the, the way like I you know like I said I'm a Christian man so I'm gonna be like we gotta have the baby, but everybody want to live their life because you know not everybody want to have a baby. The babies are expensive, too big expensive. I'm not trying to have a baby to at least a millionaire. I need at least twenty million, <laughs> all right? Kids are expensive, all right? So you know. Do something, because right now it may not concern you today, but tomorrow you may get pregnant and you have no, you got to figure something out. Like, oh, we're going to have to have this baby or we're going to have to be criminals or go on the run, you know, and that's not, that's not sexy at all. All right. That's that, you know, I bet everybody's going to have a plan B now in the crib. And you're really like, nah, nah, man, baby, you're going to take this. Condoms. You're going to have to take Like, I'm telling you, the, no one person, the only people who's going to win out of this is the, the fucking... Um, what do you call it? Companies. The companies that fucking sell birth you know, control. Birth control. Birth control industry well, is gonna go doing, up the roof. What if they're doing this because condoms are like free now? Yeah, but condoms don't even also protect you from everything. Like I was watching this movie. It's uh, an interesting. I'm having this conversation. I was writing an article about this on my website, and it's crazy because I was trying to wrap this up. But here we are going to one more conversation. But um. I was rewatching the movie Booty Call for the first time in years. <laughs> wow. Time out. Time out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I yes. w- wasn't ready for that. Yes. Let me get to it. Wasn't Sorry ready for, for my that. reaction, okay. ladies and gentlemen. So, I haven't watched Booty Call in years. Like, I saw him here one time on Comedy Central, and it was like the end of the movie, right? And it, and it was the one scene that I, I, you know, because I was a kid, I didn't pick up on everything. But now, that as an adult, I was able to watch the whole movie, the whole movie through and pick up on everything now. So the whole movie is about Tommy Davidson and Jamie Foxx trying to have sex with these two girls, Vivica, Vivica and Foxx, and um, sure. oh, I can't remember the other actress' name. His name was Tamara, Tamara Davis, Tamara Harris. I can't remember her name right now. Um, let me get it for you guys. But um, in the film, you know, they, the whole you know they're getting ready to have sex, and Tommy Davidson's condom gets messed up. You know, like they're going through a they yeah, the dog basically ripped it apart. Yes. But you know, they what do you call it? Um yeah, Tamela Jones, that's the name. So Tommy Davidson, Vivica Fox, Jamie Foxx, Tamela Jones. So Jamie Fox and Vivica Fox, you know, they it got them ready. Yeah, they got themselves hot and, and heavy real early. So and then eventually, you know, Tommy was able to do his thing with his girl. So she's like, you know, you know, put the condom on. He had a condom and the condom, you know, messed up. And she's like, you're not putting that in me. He's like, you know, a dog's mouth is cleaner than, you know, the humans. And she's like, nah, you you better go. And what, what, what made me really respect this movie is how responsible they were when it came to sex. Because you watch a lot of TV shows, you know, a lot of, a lot of watch movies where, one, you barely ever see them put on a condom, you know. And you're never, you're never, never even acknowledge that they're having safe sex or not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know... Granted, shows like Insecure may mention, like, oh, look in the corner on the side, you see there's condoms on the bedstead. But nobody looking over there. Niggas pay attention to the sex scene. Right. They don't know if them fucking condoms were put on or not. You know what I mean? So, and, and Booty Call, they were, like, like animate on the, like, baby, you need to go get condoms. And then you go get the condom, you go get the lambskin. Because <laughs> that's all that was there. And, you know, it's crazy because as a kid, I didn't know nothing about lambskin condom. But as an adult, I not only I know about it, I've used it. And, you know, I've dealt been with girls who can't, you know, who are allergic to latex or have to get lambskin. So when they're like, oh, it's $40. They're like, $40? You know, it hit me hard watching the movie. Like, holy shit, that's true. That shit did cost me $40. Holy shit, this movie is fucking relevant as fuck for 20 years old. Oh, God. That I relevant. That movie when I was. Oh, I'm like, this movie is so movie. relevant. So relevant. So, yo, thank you. So, I'm watching it, and, you know, you know, she, he comes back with the lambskin, and she's like, babe, that doesn't, you know, that may protect us from babies, but that's not going to protect us from STIs and STDs and da 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 <laughs> I'm like, ah, so now you got to go back. And I'm just like, yo, this movie is so fucking responsible like holy oh, shit yeah. I, and it's like and that, like it's, it works with the story cause you know the whole story is about him trying to hit it you know they didn't have to make it all about the condoms they could have made it like he go outside get stuck outside oh, that's what night. Jamie it was, was like doing on the other side they was like I would like to that, say that, 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 a, a, person, you know, a couple would experience when they were 
going to have sex. Right. Like, and shit is just fucking up. Right, you know, I just, like, I really appreciated that movie. Like, that's a responsible movie, because mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of... Uh, I haven't actually seen the movie. I love that movie. Because <laughs> if you look at a lot of, a lot of sex comedy now, a lot of them are very irresponsible if you think about it. Like, a lot of the stuff is people will go to jail for it in, in sex comedies. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I would look at an animal house. You know, you know. We talked about it recently. Revenge of the Nerds. Mm-hmm. There was a scene that basically the dude raped her. You ever seen Revenge of the Nerds? Yes. You yeah. you never seen Revenge of the Nerds? So, Revenge of the Nerds. The nurse is getting back at the jocks, right? And one of the cheerleaders was dating a guy, one of the jocks, and for Halloween or something, he dressed as Dark Vader. So the geek took his oh, costume. You told me. And basically have it. sex with the girl in the Dark Vader costume. And she don't even fucking call the cops. She don't fucking go into shock. She just goes, oh, okay. And just fucking falls for the nerd. But it's like, it was weird. that's basically rape. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? And, you know, those scene when they hooked up cameras in the girl's house, seen them naked. I don't know, that's, that would be considered revenge porn right now, I bet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Another movie, I think it's 16 Candles. Dude, the guy getting drunk, and the guy's like, "Yo, man, that girl right there, she she's so passed out. You can violate her in ten different ways." And they help, and the guy help him put the girl in the car, and they drive, and the girl, the guy drives off with the girl, and we have no clue what the fuck happened. Mm. But that's the guy, the, one of the lead stars that we all supposed to love. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wow, irresponsible, mm-hmm. you know. And especially the shit that I used to thought was funny, it's no longer funny. The dog come scene. And fuck dot com and, and Van Wilder. Oh yeah. That's not that, like that's actually fucking horrible. Oh yeah. That's fucking horrible. I was about to shoot. Like yeah. it's, that's a lawsuit. You get like <laughs> like nigga, I, you gotta go down for that. You gotta go to jail. Yeah, right. The dark side of me is like revenge is sweet. Like God. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Like ah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. That creamy that, special uh, sauce. They were just slurping all of that. Oh. <clears throat> so yeah, guys. If you're going to make sex comedies, romantic comedies, make them responsible. Just like Booty Call. Just Yo, like Jamie Booty Fox Call. Jamie Foxx, cut the check. Send a shout out. And just like sex, be responsible. Definitely. Because now there's a chance that they're going to put y'all in jail. Especially, and I hate to make it a race thing, but, you know, if you look at the, the area that they're doing this, there's a whole bunch of black areas. So, ho, oh, so, uh, be careful out there, y'all. Until next time, much love, God bless, two pieces of chicken grease. We'll see you another time. Night. Later. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that this will be the last episode of the Birds and the Bees podcast. And I should give you the heads up there will be a new series replacing this one called The Kinky Candy Store. But as of now, this is the last episode of the Birds and the Bees, and we'll be right back next week with a new show. Thanks for following and supporting.